everybody. Welcome to my suburban oasis. So I'm outside today. It's a beautiful day. It's actually been a little bit hot uh, considering that it's spring. It's about 85 degrees out right now here in mid-Michigan. My name's Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B. So a lot of our plants are not used to this really warm weather this time of year. So I've got an exciting video for you today. We're going to do some planting. We're going to plant up some pots, which I have been waiting for uh, for quite some time now, just anticipating. Um, I'm not going to plant these today, but I thought I would just show you. I have some uh, foxgloves that I did some winter sowing of. So these are looking pretty good and I'm going to put them into some small pots so that they can continue to grow and then i also have some white violas that have done really well and then i have a whole nother thing of foxgloves um they they sow really well um or grow really well in winter sowing so um these uh i cannot recall the variety of these i think they're excelsior excelsior foxglove so uh, very excited about that, but um, I just recently volunteered at a plant sale at Michigan State University. Um, I'm a master gardener through the Michigan State University Extension, and so it's a lot of fun. They have plant sales in the fall, which focus a lot more on house plants, and then in the spring, which focus on annuals and perennials. So I've got some great plants that I want to show you and that we're going to use in our containers. The first one actually that I'm going to show you is a present. This one I'm going to be taking over to my sister's this evening. She just created a new small pond in her backyard. And so this is the Cypress Baby Tut. And uh, this grows in full sun. And the great thing about this is you can just put the base of it into the water of the pond and it will continue to grow. So I think she's really going to like it. I got her some other calla lilies for Mother's Day. And it's going to be a great addition to her pond. For those of you who follow me, you know I have some concrete planters at the end of my pool, so we are going to use these cardoons as basically the thriller, right? In a pot, you really want to have a thriller, a spiller, and some filler, and this one's going to be my thriller. I've never grown cardoons before. Last year, I had um, some elephant ears, some coffee cups allocations, but I thought when I saw these that I would give them a try. They're basically very similar to artichokes and they need very little water, which is a super plus for me because uh, that way I won't have to haul my hose over to water them as much. They're a very Mediterranean type plant. So I'm looking forward to seeing how those grow on. It'll be exciting to see. Then I also plan to plant up some additional planters that I have, which I will show you soon um, with clematis. And um, this will probably be another video, but in that I also plan to plant some super bells. And these are super bells black current. So these I think are super gorgeous. Super bells black current. And these are an annual, these are calibracoa. And the nice thing about these is also they do really well in pots because they don't require as much watering. So um, I'm excited to have them. I really love the color of these and I think they'll go well with just about any of the clematis that I have. I have white, pink, and purple. Or multi-blue I guess is what it's called, but it looks kind of purple to me. All right, next up. Okay, next up, oh shoot, I kind of pinched off a flower here, but that's okay. It'll keep growing. So these are Cake Pop Verbena. And uh, again, a lot of things are wilty today because it has been so hot. And I also appear to have smushed these a little bit in their transport. But these are super cute. Um, these like sun and they do often self seed. I'm trying to figure out whether or not my verbenas have self seeded this year or not because I planted some last year. It was not the cake pop variety, but these are really cute. They have these little balls on the end. So they look like cake pops. I think that's super pretty and they do well also in full sun and they don't require a ton of water either. So they're very low maintenance annual.
And finally, for a little bit more of a spiller, I have this Scaviola, and this is the Serdiva Fashion Pink. And again, these are like full sun, so these are going to be gorgeous. I tried these, um, a different type of Scaviola last year, and I wasn't sure if I would like them because I thought at first when I saw pictures of them that they looked kind of messy, but they look really great, and they definitely have a very horizontal habit, and they fill and spill very well. So I'm definitely going to enjoy seeing how this one performs this year. All right, let's go put the cardoon into the pots. All right, so you might not be able to see it very well, but I do have a couple of versions of nasturtium in here. The nasturtium that I have in this pot are both a peachy apricot color and a pink color. And I got them from Select Seeds and I grew them from seed. And so I'm super excited about how they've been doing in the pot so far this week, given that the entire week has been in the 80s. So I think they're gonna fare well over the summer. And then over here, which you can't see very well because it's very small still, it's just coming up, is a perennial. I have uh, what is called oftentimes the red hot poker plant, but this one is a little bit orangey, so I think that will tie in really neat to the colors of that plant. And then this kind of blue spiky feather type of a thriller in this pot is gonna be really fun. Let's put it in. Wow, these are pretty root bound, so I'm just gonna take some of the bottom roots and kind of break them up a little bit. They're not too bad, but just enough so that I wanna get them off and kind of give them a little freedom. Scratch them around the sides. And then we'll plant it in here. I'm gonna plant it right at the soil level. And then I actually added some mulch in this pot this year because I thought that would help with some of the water retention. So I think this is gonna be fun. It's a really kind of glaucous blue and it's very, again, similar to the artichokes, and I think it's gonna look really nice with the color of this foliage that we have on the nasturtiums as well. I can't wait to see how it performs. I'm gonna put some in my other pot, and then we're gonna move on and plant some of the clematis and the other annuals. So I'm giving you a little bit of a side view here of this pot, and you can see the red hot poker just coming up right there. And then I'm gonna put this right behind really important to have a good draining soil for these and I think it's really going to enjoy having more space for its roots. These like the heat because again they are native to the Mediterranean. The one thing that I like about going to plant sales or uh, specialty nurseries is you'll find plants that you don't necessarily find other places. You can actually eat some of the parts of the cardoon, like the stem, um, but I'm not planning to do any of that. So, um, all right, let's go do some clematis. All right, everybody, we're gonna try a fun experiment today. So. In this particular pot, because I have some clematis where I don't know exactly what they are because I failed to label them appropriately, um, I thought they would be fine because I had them right next to another labeled one, but then I ended up mixing them up. So lesson of the day is make sure you label things that you don't know what they are um, because later you'll forget. And I will just tell you that they all look pretty much the same. I also put these clematis out to harden them off. So just a teaching moment and you can learn from my mistakes, which is I put these out before it was a little bit too cold for them, or excuse me, these actually got too much sun. So I put them out and they were just fine. They were hardened off to the cold, but we had a really sunny day. So you can see the spots on the original leaves. They continue to grow, but some of them don't look great. So this experiment is going to be to put these clematis in with two cherry tomatoes and we're gonna use a trellis. So this is gonna be very interesting. So I just have some potting mix here. And this is just a miracle grow. 
You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can even order it online and have it delivered right to your doorstep. So we're pretty much going to fill this pot completely up because I don't have a ton of soil in either of these containers and we're going to bury the cherry tomatoes right up to their bottom leaves because that way they will grow some adventitious roots which will be helpful to them and that will help correct anything that might be like a little bit of stretching due to being grown inside. I'm just firming it down a little bit because I want to see how much it's going to settle when you put soil into containers oftentimes it's good to put in a little bit more than you think that you're going to need because it will sink after you water it so the next thing that I need to do is put in the bottom of my trellis this is the bottom of the trellis and I'm just going to bury it And then the top of the trellis is going to go right into this hole and straight down and it slides in like this. So I think what will be nice about this is it will give a little bit of support to that tomato plant as it grows out as well as the clematis. All right, so this is just Cherry Falls Cherry Tomato. I grew this last year and I really liked it. It was a pretty prolific producer for me. So I'm looking forward to having them again this year. I'm gonna snap off this bottom leaf right here. Let me get my glove off so I can do it. Whoa, jumping tomato plants. So I'm just gonna snip off these leaves at the bottom here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bury it and bury the whole stem right up to there. At least I'm gonna try. And we'll put one tomato on each side. And then after we put the tomatoes in, we'll put one clematis on each of the other sides. So the clematis will have something to grow up on and the tomatoes as well. I might need to add a little bit more soil it looks like to this container because it definitely gets pretty fluffy as I work with it. So you actually don't have to take the leaves off. I just did. Um, it's not necessary, but it's definitely just a fine way to do it. Okay, those look good. And before I put more soil in, I'm just going to plant the clematis. These were grown from plugs. So I started them inside and then I brought them out and you can see this one did a whole lot better with the sunshine than the other one did. So it just depends on the variety sometimes in their positioning. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to plant these pretty much at the soil level right now. And because the tomatoes could use about an inch more soil, I'm going to plant these um, right at soil level. And then clematis do like to be buried also a little bit higher than their first set of leaves so I'll do that with those. Wow 
wow, the roots are growing really well on this clematis, so that makes me happy. Even the soil is incredibly warm from sitting out today. Okay, let's get the other one in. I just had these sticks in the pots in case um, they got too tall and leggy that they would be able to then have a little support. Looks like I got a a free oops annual in this pot wow this one's a lot drier than the other one was so i have a free snapdragon it looks like some of the seeds must have escaped one of my other pots try to get this one buried nice and deep here and then let's angle it in towards the trellis Okay, I'm just going to backfill this pot a little bit and then I'll water it in. that should do it for those hopefully this tomato perks up a little bit more he looks a little unhappy after I threw him on the ground he should be fine after he uh, perks up overnight when the temperatures cool down so my hair probably looks a little out of control it's a little frizzy I'm in a different outfit it's because the power went out on my camera so I was unable to provide you with the rest of my um, video so here I am and uh, I'm going to give you a really quick look at a couple of planters that I just did. Besides the fountain, another fun thing about summer is that we get out Turtle Boy. There's Turtle Boy right over there. He's awesome. He used to be a fountain but now we just put him by the pool and uh, he holds a turtle and it's super cute. Anyhow, he's out now. It's something that my husband got at an auction. And then these are the planters that I planted up. I planted up three, this far one, this one that's closest to us right here, and then the one in the middle. So let's talk about uh, the ones on the side first, this one closest to me. This one is exactly the same and is mirrored by the planter on the other end. And the reason for that is because I like to ensure that there's a little bit of symmetry uh, when you look at this from the pool, especially from the deck. And this is accomplished for me by a couple of different things. We have some petunias right here. These are wave petunias. And I grew these from seeds that I collected at the end of the season last year. These are a very light yellow, creamy colored, almost a white. And then in the middle, we have a beautiful medium hot pink geranium. And that is grown from a cutting that I did. And I put in water and I grew that on. And then behind it are some snapdragons that I did from seed. So we have four snapdragons. There's two in each of those small groupings there. And those are the black print snapdragons, again, that I grew from seed this year. So a very economical way to plant this planter. It doesn't look like a lot right now, but in a few weeks, it will definitely grow much bigger and begin to fill in this pot. So I think it's gonna be really fun. And again, I did that for symmetry and planted the other pot the exact same way. Now here, in order to provide a little bit of continuity, what I did was um, I took some of the snapdragons and I put those in the back of this pot. And then in the front, I also have a couple of the cute cool wave petunias. And so those are really going to fill in under the bottom. And then this is a small shrub slash tree that I got at G Farms when I went 
um, and this is a pagoda dogwood so this is looking really beautiful i love the foliage it has some red slash purplish burgundy tint on the edges of the foliage and this will bloom in the spring so what i like to do with some of my pots and i've done this with arborvitas over the years and various other small shrubs or trees is to plant a perennial as a centerpiece and then underplant it with some annuals and that way when the fall comes what i can do is take this perennial shrub or tree and put it out into my landscape so i'm hoping to put this one in the way back this fall and it does have some resistance to deer but i'll definitely have to still continue to protect it after the rain we got everything is really perked up that cardoon is super happy in its new home And the winner of this fabulous garden transplanter is, dun dun dun, Elizabeth Myers. Congratulations. Please send me an email to mysuburbanoasis at gmail.com. You'll see it in the description and I will get this out to you as soon as you send me your address. You have 30 days to claim your prize and if you don't, we'll award it to someone else. Thanks so much. Well, thanks everybody for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video on putting together some plants and putting them into pots and also what you can do to save money by using some of your own seedlings and small transplants or cuttings. Thanks again for joining me today. We'll see you next time. Bye.